All right, so for our next video, we're gonna look at absolute value. So first we gotta talk about what absolute value means. The absolute value is the distance from zero. Oop, get my pen right in here. Oh, and I forgot to put my, my numbers in here. Let's see, this one I think was supposed to be a four. And this one is a zero, maybe. All right, so when we're talking about distance from zero, you can think about a number line, right? So like this is my number line. I got, you know, one, two, three, four. On this side, we keep getting bigger and bigger. And on the left, we have our negatives, and we keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so my distance from zero when I'm at two. So if I'm here at two, my distance from zero is two. So the absolute value of two is two. Right, if I go to negative four, okay, negative four, my distance from negative four to zero is one, two, three, four. So the absolute value of negative four is a positive four. Okay, absolute value is negative, never going to be a negative number because we never think about distance uh, as a negative value. Right, then I'm going to go to positive four. Okay, positive four, we got one, two, three, four. So the absolute value of four is also four. And then zero is on zero. So my distance from zero that zero is, is just zero. All right, when we solve absolute value equations, we use what we know about the distance from zero, right? So if I have the absolute value of x is three, that means I wanna figure out the value of x that's three units away from zero. So the obvious one that comes to mind is three, right? But there's another number that's three away from zero, and that's gonna be negative three. Just like up here, right? We said the absolute value of negative four and positive four, both of those absolute values were still positive four. So that means for all of my absolute values, I actually have two answers, or potentially two answers. We'll look at the different scenarios in a second. All right, so for this one, I have the absolute value equals three. So that means that x minus two has to equal three and negative three. So just like we did here, I can go ahead and write an equation. All right, but now to figure out x, I've got to solve. So I'm just going to add two to both sides, and I'm going to get x equals five. And then an x equals negative one. So then those are my two answers for x. Right, and then for number three, I've got that my absolute value or my distance from zero is seven, so that means everything inside can either equal a negative seven or a positive seven. It doesn't matter which order you write them. Okay, but then again, I'm gonna have to solve for x, so we're gonna subtract. All right, do it again over here. And then divide to get x by itself. All right, so negative 12 divided by 3 is a negative 4. And then 2 divided by 3, I can't simplify, so we're just going to leave that as 2 thirds. All right, so my answer is negative 4 and 2 thirds. All right, but we do have some different scenarios. There's not always going to be two answers. Let me scooch up some. All right, so if I have my distance from 0 equaling a positive number, that is like what we just did for those three examples and we're gonna have two solutions every time. So if my absolute value equals a positive, we have two solutions, all right? If I have absolute value equals zero, that's like when we came up here, we said that if it was on zero, it's gotta be zero and there's no other numbers, right? Because I'm not going left or right. So it's not that there's gonna be two solutions, there's actually only gonna be one because only one number is one or zero units away from zero, and that solution is actually going to be zero. Okay, we'll see an example of that in a second. All right, and then my absolute value equals a negative number. Remember, we don't ever have negative distances, so that means that if I get down to my absolute value being a negative number, I have a no solution problem. All right, so I'm gonna do three more examples, but these look a little different. They got some more steps in here, and so one thing you have to remember is that the first thing you have to do is isolate 
the absolute value. So up here, we only had the absolute values. We didn't have to do anything. But for these three examples, we've got some numbers outside the absolute value. So I got to get rid of all of those extra numbers, then decide if I'm going to have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. All right, so for the first one, I'm going to start by getting rid of this two. Okay, we're doing it just like we did when we solved this equation. First, I got rid of the 5, then I got rid of the 3 that was touching the x because I wanted the x by itself. So here, I'm going to get rid of the 2, then I'm going to get rid of the 5 because I want to slowly get my absolute value by itself. So right now, this is a positive 2, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. All right, so I get negative 5 times the absolute value of 5m minus 5 equals a negative 75. Right now, this is like negative 5 times the absolute value, right? Or negative 5x. I want to get this by itself, so to get rid of the negative 5, we're going to divide. So we have 5m minus 5 in our absolute value, and that equals uh, 75 divided by 5 is 15, and our negatives cancel. So now I have my absolute value equals a positive number. So that means I'm going to have two solutions because it equals a positive, right? And my two solutions are going to come from splitting this apart because my distance from 0 is 15. So that means I can equal 15, and I can equal a negative 15. And then we solve, just like we did before. So I'm going to add 5 and divide by 5, and I'm running out of room. But we get that one option is that m equals 4, right? And then I'm going to add 5. So we get 5m equals a negative 10, and then divide by 5, and we get m equals negative 2. Okay, now your variable can be a negative number. The absolute value cannot equal a negative number, so it's two different things. Okay, for number 5, we've got uh, 3 minus the absolute value of something equals 3. So first thing i got to do is get rid of this 3. So I'm going to start by subtracting 3 from both sides. Now don't forget about that negative. This is like a negative 1 out front. Still a number, it's still there. So I'm going to have negative absolute value of 8x minus 6 equals 0. And just like we did over here, I have to get rid of that negative 5. Well here I have to get rid of this negative 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 1. Right, so I get the absolute value of 8x minus 6 equals, and then 0 divided by anything is still 0. So now this one is equal to 0, so I'm only going to have one solution. All right, and that solution ends up being whatever makes 8x minus 6 equal 0, because the only number that's 0 units away from 0 is 0. That's it. All right, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So we get 8x equals 6 divided by 8, right? So I can't do 6 divided by 8, but I can simplify by dividing both of those by 2. So we get x equals 3 fourths. Okay, then for our last example, same thing. I'm going to start by getting rid of this 7. So I have 2 times the absolute value equals a negative 4. Then I'm going to get rid of that 2 by dividing, so I get the absolute value of 3x plus 11 equals negative 2, right? And I can stop right there because my absolute value equals a negative number, and I can say it's no solution, right? Or I could write, remember, your symbol for no solution is a 0 with a slash through it. Okay, so you're going to have two solutions, one solution, or no solution.